SEC gets to battle that one. They're very excited. They're going to have somebody in the Final Four. They're a football conference, but they play some basketball as they come through there. Those teams played twice in the regular season. Kentucky at home thumped them at Auburn one by two. First off, Kentucky, from what you saw in this game, <laughs> In this game, I know the, 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 the end of it, you were here with us, but Kentucky, uh, what they do right to put them in position here? In this game, they had to win the game in the front court against mm -hmm. Houston. I mean, the back court I thought was going to be a push. You're talking about veteran guards for Houston against young guards for Kentucky. Kentucky guards played well, but to win this game, they had to win it in the front court. And P.J. Washington was going to be a difference maker. When P.J. Washington catches it on the left block, he the scores. If you run a double at him, he makes the pass. He and Reed Travis play really good post-to-post -post basketball. They did that. Both teams are terrific defensive teams. Both teams have a toughness about them. Kentucky mm -hmm. won this on the glass and in the paint. I would agree with you. And I think defensively, when you think about Ashton Higgins and the way they defend Seth, you know, Corey Davis, who's one of the best players for Houston, he was 5 of 16 from the field, 1 of 7 from the three-point line. So, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, being able to shade him, deny him the ball, make it difficult. The, I, I picked Kentucky to win because I think they are a complete team. When you have Reed Travis and P.J. Washington down low, they carve out space. They're a grown man. And their guards have been growing the entire year. Now, this game against Auburn is going to be a fight because Auburn today scored 96 points. Yeah, they, they had were, six guys scoring good. double figures, and they shot the lights out of the ball. So this game, once again, will test mm -hmm. the defensive discipline of Kentucky. The big thing for the, in this game, defensive transition for Kentucky, defending the three-point line. you got to understand, now, <clears throat> Auburn plays with such freedom and such confidence that you've got to be able to contain the basketball. And one thing John Calipari has done both times they've played Auburn is when Jared Harper gets in the lane, they did not help. They did not come off any shooters, whether mm -hmm. it's Dunbar, whether it's Brown. They stayed home, and they made Harper a scorer. And I think they'll, they'll mm -hmm. adopt that same philosophy. Now, they can't just go up and down. Right. All right? They'll look to pound that thing into the paint and then control the three-point shooting by not helping on dribble penetration. And then if they don't have Okiki, too, that's, that's going to be, that's gonna that's be, gonna be they, a major they thing. Hammered, they hammered uh, North Carolina tonight by the time the game was out of hand. Oof. Eight minutes left when Okiki gets hurt. Yep. Right? P.J. Washington comes back. He's played some Okiki. Looks like they think it's serious ACL something in the knee. Uh, how bad is that of a handicap for the Tigers going in? I, I think that hurts them uh, big time. I, Okiki's a pro. Uh, he is a pro. He is mm -hmm. efficient. He wants to have the ball in his hands. He wants to score. He can shoot from the outside. I think not having him is a, is a big loss for them. It's you, Okiki is so versatile. He's a six-foot, eight-inch player. You can pick and pop. You can run him down to the block. He runs the floor. He catches in the trail spot. And he's become a legitimate shot blocker and rebounder. Mm -hmm. Okiki, his aggressiveness the second half of the season is the reason that Auburn is where they are right now.